Hello and welcome to another video with me, Christian Rauchenwald. Now recently we took a look at an application called NiceHash that allows you to earn money by renting out your hardware so others can mine different cryptocurrencies and you get paid in Bitcoin. And today we're going to look at a similar application called HoneyMiner. HoneyMiner is an app that unlike NiceHash doesn't pay you to rent out your hardware but actually mines on your computer for you within the HoneyMiner pool and you will get paid in Bitcoin from the pool reward. So basically from all the coins that HoneyMiner is able to mine. So you see there is a small difference between how NiceHash and HoneyMiner work and that's also the reason why you have different revenues from each of those applications. So depending on your hardware, the current Bitcoin price, the current demand on NiceHash and so on, you may end up earning more on NiceHash or you may end up earning more on HoneyMiner. At the end of the day, this video is more specifically about HoneyMiner, but if you're curious about NiceHash, I recommend that you check the video that I made about it recently, which you can find in the card up here. And with that, let's take a look at how HoneyMiner works. First things first, in order to get started, you can use the link in the description of the first comment down below, which will take you to a page that looks like this. And for using the link, you'll also receive your first 1000 Satoshis for free. If you don't know what a Satoshi is, it's basically a small unit of Bitcoin. So it's not Bitcoin, micro Bitcoin, mini Bitcoin and so on, but basically Satoshis are a fraction of Bitcoin. And once you've signed up, the next step would actually be to download the HoneyMiner application. But I'm not going to download and install it here on my MacBook Pro, although you can do that as well, because I've already installed it on my Windows computer, as you can see right here. Now, when you look at the application, you'll notice that it's very similar to NiceHash. It has a few differences. It provides you more information as to your yesterday's earnings, today's earnings, and so on, and also shows the amount of referrals. But in the end of the day, the core number that we're interested in is the amount of money or projected revenue in 24 hours. But there is a core difference because in NiceHash you can enter your cost per kilowatt hour in electricity and your earnings in the NiceHash applications will actually already consider how much you pay for electricity. Whereas the earnings shown in the HoneyMiner application do not consider how much you pay for electricity, which means the numbers shown here are slightly inflated. But enough about that, let's take a look at what you need to do in order to get started. So once you've downloaded and installed the application, you may also have to add it as an exclusion in your antivirus software. In that case, you have to look up the tutorial for your antivirus software, how to exclude certain applications or folders. And once that's done and you start the application, you can go to settings and basically configure HoneyMiner to your liking. Just like with NiceHash, you also have the option to set it to only mine when your computer is idle, which would mean every time you leave the computer inactive, it will start mining coins for you. And every time you come back and start using it, it will stop mining. So you have your full computer's resources available to whatever you want to use it for. In addition to that, just like with NiceHash, you can actually decide if you want to use your CPU and your GPU or only one of the two things for mining. Although unlike NiceHash, you don't get deeper insights into the algorithms that are used. So you'll have to leave it up to HoneyMiner to actually pick or make the right choice for you, which at the end of the day is the same as in NiceHash. Although as mentioned in NiceHash, you at least get the information which algorithms provide what kind of hash rate, which for the average user honestly doesn't make a huge difference, but for advanced users is kind of nice to know. And besides that, there are honestly not many relevant settings. You can set the application up to automatically start when you boot your computer. You can set it up to mine when your computer is idle and you can pick which kind of hardware should be used. So your CPU or also your GPUs or only your GPUs. So it's also kind of more user friendly. Now, one other feature that you don't have in NiceHash or at least not in the same way is that you could rent additional GPUs by using the Hotel Honey feature that you see at the bottom of the application. Now, this would allow you to pay for additional hardware so it would be hardware from other people that then would mine for you. But at the time of recording this video, all the GPUs have been sold out and considering the increasing popularity of HoneyMiner, I don't think that's going to change very soon. Plus, I also actually don't think that it's profitable to rent other people's hardware for mining in the first place. But I still wanted to mention it so you know it's part of the HoneyMiner application and it's part of the offer. Now, with the minimal settings configured, we can basically go back to 
to the dashboard by clicking the done button and just look at the screen here. Now we have an option to disable honey miner. So basically it stops. If you set it to idle mining then you cannot use that button. It will just mention that it's set to mine on idle. And besides that we can see the projection that I'm projected to earn $1.60 per 24 hours. And that's a crucial number because as mentioned earlier, Honey Miner works different from NiceHash because you're actually mining yourself. Whereas in NiceHash, you are renting out your hardware for mining and you get paid for that. So at the moment, for example, in NiceHash, I would be generating around $2.50 after electricity cost per 24 hours. Whereas in Honey Miner, I'm only looking at $1.60. Although a couple days ago, the situation was the exact opposite and the minings in Honey Miner were actually higher than in NiceHash. So it's kind of worth it to here and there check which of the application currently pays more or keep track of the estimated earnings for a couple of days for each application to figure out which one pays on average the most with your hardware. Now that's pretty much it. As mentioned in my nice hash review video, which again you can watch by clicking on the card up here, I recommend that you test both applications so that you keep each application running for some time to see which one actually pays you the most money and then just keep the app running on your computer and basically every couple of weeks or maybe every couple of months you'll be able to withdraw a couple of dollars that you wouldn't have otherwise. And please don't forget to consider your electricity costs and if you're worried how you can calculate it since Honeyminer doesn't consider it in the application I would recommend that you go ahead and install NiceHash and also watch my NiceHash review video where I walk you through all the steps because in there you can enter your electricity cost and you will be able to see the difference when you enter zero cents as electricity cost and when you enter your actual electricity cost and then the difference between those two numbers will be how much your computer actually uses in a day in electricity when it's mining and you can just deduct it from the number that Honeyminer says you are about to earn in 24 hours. As always, you can find all the links to Honey Miner, NiceHash and all the other stuff I mentioned in the description down below. If you have any questions whatsoever, just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. And with that, I'm going to leave you to it. Thanks for watching. See you in one of my other videos. Till then, bye-bye.